well do you advocate for yourself? For many people, it's a really hard topic. We tend to downplay our own experience and even our skills. This is especially true for women. My guest today is Chandra Sanders from The Mom Project, and we're talking about advocating for yourself. Chandra, really good to talk to you today. Why is it that this is so much harder for women? Honestly, moms, women are so used to putting everyone else ahead of ourselves, and we're kind of brought up to be modest, and we really need to break out of that. If no one advocates for us, it's our responsibility to advocate for ourselves. We are our biggest cheerleader. Like, I don't give anyone the power to advocate for me. That's my responsibility. So if there's something that I want, if there's a goal that I'm trying to achieve, if there's a role that I'm trying to get promoted to, that's my job to advocate for myself. No one knows me better than me. So why not? You know, I think you're right. We're brought up to be modest. And yet in this day and age to get what we want and to be able to say to the person interviewing you or that position that you want, maybe it's a volunteer job, who knows what it might be. So let's, let's put it into um, kind of a, the issue that a lot of people have right now, and that's balancing work and family. And uh, you know, we've, we've kind of grown accustomed now to, well, at least for me, working at home. And when we're, we're, when we're done with this interview, I'm going to go run one of my kids to camp. And I've got the ability to do that because I'm working at home. But a lot of people are going back into the corporate world where they might not have that flexibility, but they need to ask for it. Mm -hmm. Definitely need to ask for it. I know we have a lot of competing priorities, but my personal um, mantra is to just be agile and being agile is being flexible, right? So I always plan for the minimum viable product either for that day or for that month. What are the, what's the minimum that I need to do <laughs> to get everything that I need to be need done um, today or this week or this month. And then if there's room for extra, great. However, I'm always going to plan for just the minimum. That way I'm not stressed out. That way I'm not feeling like I'm overwhelmed. I'm happy. I'm at peace. I haven't worked in an office since 2017, since I had my last kid. And that has been like the best thing in the world for me. I feel like I'm able to experience a life in which I hadn't otherwise had an opportunity, um, but being in a flexible role, being with a company who understands what it takes, who values motherhood, who, who values parenthood, um, it just makes all of the difference in the world. You know, it's interesting, I think, how the pandemic has put us in a lot of difficult situations, but it's also helped give us this perspective of, I, I, especially for moms, that I need this flexibility. It, I changed my entire career because of the pandemic and now working at home. And it's been a blessing for me and for several others. But I know at the mom project where you work, you're helping, you're helping women get back into the workforce. Tell me about that and, and how you're helping, what advice you would have for people. 2.1 million moms left the workforce during this pandemic. Right, so it is imperative that we do what it takes to get moms back in the workforce. Moms, and of course, there's still the childcare crisis going on, right? If you haven't been working, you can't really afford childcare. And then lots of times childcare centers are struggling also to find staff, right? And so there's just this huge struggle that's happening. But if you really want moms to get back into the workforce, you have to offer flexibility. We understand that some companies aren't really ready to go 100% remote. However, please offer roles and opportunities and options in which moms can come to work, let's say two days a week, three days a week, and not a complete five day, 40 hour work schedule. Because again, we have kids to take care of. We have ourselves to take care of. We have our families to take care of. And we need to be able to balance all of that and truly to make a difference in our lives and continue making a difference in our kids' lives as well. So let's be specific. Um, maybe you have a boss that's not as understanding. And you have someone else that you work with that's like, well, why should you work at home? I mean, I faced that. I needed and I wanted to broadcast out of my basement when, when I was working the morning show. It was great for me, but others wanted that flexibility too. So if you're, if you're wanting that flexibility, how would you suggest someone approach their manager with that request? Definitely ask for what you want. Right. And again, this goes back to self-advocating, right? You have to advocate for yourself. However, 
I am not going to relinquish the power of my life of what I want to someone else. So if your boss, if your company is not supportive of your needs, then it's almost time for you to go seek other opportunities. Mm -hmm. The Mom Project has a complete platform, a talent marketplace that connects with connects mothers, dads, and allies with companies who understand flexibility, who understand what moms need and value that in order to truly diversify the workforce, which is extremely important in today's society. Did the Mom Project, did this come out of the pandemic? Is this because of what we've been through? And and tell me more about it. Can you repeat that one more time? I didn't hear. Yeah, sure. Did the Mom Project, uh, did it come out of the pandemic? Is, is that where it started? No, the Mom Project was launched in 2016 after our CEO, Allison, had her first or second kid and realized that her job wasn't going to slow down or wait for her because she's a mom, right? So she wanted to create new pathways for moms not have to, to not have to sacrifice a career just because they're a mom. So many women leave the workforce because they're moms and sacrifice their, their whole entire lives to take care of their kids. And it's just, it doesn't have to be that way. You can have the best of both worlds. And so she wanted to create pathways for moms to remain active, to remain in the workforce. A lot of times moms you know, have degrees, they've spent all these years in school, really working for themselves, and to just be knocked out of the workforce because they're a mom, it's just not right. So she created the Mom Project to provide pathways for moms to remain active and take care of their families while also taking care of themselves. Yeah, well, you have three kids. How do you do it? You're, I mean, I know how busy you are. You've got kids at all ends of the spectrum from four to 18, right? Oh my gosh, yes. And I'm a single mom of three. Mm. So that is just even more of a challenge, right? However, again, I'm seeking a company that understands what I need. Like I said, after I had my last kid, I have not been in an office full time since then. And that has been the best um, decision I've made, not just for my family, but also my own mental health, (laughs) because I'm not stressed out about having to sit at my computer for eight hours. I can balance both. I can bring my kid to school. I can cook dinner in the middle, in the middle of the day. So I don't have to do it at night, even though I may still work at night, I'm able to have that flexibility so that I can create a life that works for me and my family without having to sacrifice my economic opportunities. You know, this is, it's kind of new for me in, uh, I'm working here in my bedroom and mm-hmm. some experts uh, will say, make sure your office is separate from the rest of your life. I haven't done that. You know, I take it with me everywhere. And I kind of, I kind of like that because I love what I do. I don't mind it. I don't feel like I need to shut it away, but what, what advice would you have for people who are trying to balance it, but not let it bleed into their family life. Like, I know there are times at night where my family might be doing something and I'm like, I'm just going to go work on that graphic I need to, you know, and I'll sneak up to my room. And so it does tend to first thing in the morning, late in the evening. um, I always feel like I should be doing something more with work because it's right here in my home. What advice and how do you manage that with three kids and working from home? I love having my office in my bedroom, (laughs) honestly. Um, I'm able to take a quick look, answer an email while I'm doing and taking care of other things. Um, You know, we talk about work-life balance, but honestly, it's more of like a work-life integration. It has to work together. There are times when I'm working at 8 p.m., 9 p.m. at night, but then there are times when I'm working early in the morning. And my kids understand that if mom doesn't work, we don't eat. So we're all in this thing together. We're working as a team. They understand. And for them to see their mom working hard to take care of them, but also it shows them how important work is and what they need to do when it's time for them to get to work. I'm not sacrificing myself. I'm not sacrificing them. I'm making it all work together. And for them to see that, um, I don't hear any complaints from them at all. Yeah, I love that concept, work-life integration instead of balance. And it really comes down to, I had another guest a few episodes ago where we talked about if you love and you really love what you do, you don't feel like, oh, I've got to balance it because I don't like this and I like this and it's, but it's all, it all works together when you love what you do and you're passionate about it and your kids see that you're passionate about it and you want to do it. It's not that you 
have to do it, right. that you want to do it because you enjoy it and it supports your family. How, how do you talk to your kids about it? What do you think we need to do to explain that to our kids? And as I like to say, model that to our kids. I want my kids and my kids have seen me through many iterations of life. I started my career as a high school Spanish teacher a long time ago. I've owned a small business while working full time. So they've seen mom do a lot. And so um, it allows them to be creative in creating the life that they want. I want them to be happy in whatever career that they choose. And so I'm here to guide them in whichever direction they want to go as long as they go right? We're all going to make mistakes. We're all going to go through iterations, but to keep going, I think that's the most important thing that I can show them. Yeah. So, so true. Sometimes when you you feel like I just need to stop and that's when we're modeling to them. Nope. You just keep going. Just keep swimming, right? Keep swimming. (laughs) Keep keep swimming. swimming. (laughs) That's it. (laughs) Um, So um, I want to talk about uh, the mom project too, and your role there. Um, what is it that you do for them in helping women get back and the program that you run? Yeah, so I am the director of RISE. RISE is an upskilling program to help mothers, to help women of color, to help dads, moms, allies who have been impacted by COVID-19 and not just impacted by COVID-19, but really just to create new pathways for them to get skills so that they can have other opportunities that offer flexibility, that offer the things that they need to take them to the next level in life. So we are a scholarship program that helps moms gain skills, their fast track um, certification programs, right? So they can be finished within six weeks to six months, um, part-time because we understand that moms have other responsibilities. Lots of times they're still working, taking care of their kids. However, that should not stop you from upskilling yourself to reach new heights and to elevating yourself in either a new career or the same career that you're in. So we're offering these scholarship opportunities, no cost to moms, dads, or allies. Um, But then not just that, we're offering support. We understand that moms are often left unsupported because we're supporting everyone else, right? And so that kind of keeps us from going towards our goals and achieving them. However, so we are here to offer them that support on a daily, on a weekly basis. Sometimes moms just need someone to talk to, a little encouragement to keep them moving. And so we have that and has made all the difference in the world. Um, you know, I heard a story not too long ago of a lady who's in, a, in our program who, you know, set a goal for herself. She was laid off during COVID and just really was down and out and unmotivated, just felt like all her worth was gone. But upon meeting with the mom project, coming on board, uh, taking advantage of all the resources that we have, we have resume optimization because we know that it's not just the certificate that's going to give you the edge. Your resume needs to be able to stand up to the test for applicant tracking systems, right? Um, Also, LinkedIn is extremely important. So we're allowing them to optimize their LinkedIn profile and showing them like what is going to catch the attention of recruiters. Not just that, um, we are connecting them with different mentors from other Fortune 100 companies. But then not just that, we also have job placement upon completion. So we're bringing you into the program, giving you new skills, free of charge, really transforming your resume, transforming yourself, um, but then also providing you with job opportunities upon completion to truly take advantage of the skills you've just obtained. And all of this at no cost? No cost to the participants. We're removing all the barriers. I mean, moms, dads, allies, we've all been through a lot this year. We don't need anything else to stand in our way. Who's paying for it then? Do you have sponsors or what's on the other end? Yeah, we do have sponsors. We have um, different companies who are sponsoring ladies coming through the program. Mm. Um, We have donations coming in from other companies, other personal donations, because people are truly committed to making a difference and coming out of this she session, honestly. So we have money coming in. Because I find that fascinating. And you mentioned, what did you say? 2.1 million women? Or workers. 2.1 million women. Mm-hmm. Wow. Who stepped out of the workforce during COVID? Either wow. were laid off or had to choose between working 
or taking care of their kids who are doing at home doing remote learning. And of course, your mom, you're going to, you're going to step away and go, I have to take care of my kids because they're learning at home and I don't have another option. So Correct. you called that not the recession, but the she session. And the I, she I session. find that fascinating. Um, so uh, the other thing I find really interesting about this is myself and for many other women, maybe you had a job 10, 15, <laughs> maybe even five years ago, but you look at women who are trying to get back into the workforce. Um, and it's different now. You said LinkedIn, you talked about resumes, everything's different now. So you're it's helping different. Them, yeah. You're helping them kind of uh, learn the new way with technology of how to apply for jobs. Yeah, it's different, but it's not impossible. I have a lady who completed her six week certification as a Salesforce administrator, had been out of the workforce for a while because she was taking care of her husband, taking care of her kids came in, she advanced through her six week program, completed her certification, and now is a Salesforce administrator for an amazing company. So it's not impossible, even if you have been out for a long time. And again, it's the mom project. We have a platform to be able to elevate the moms. We just need the moms to come. We want to upskill and elevate 10,000 women within the next three years. And we're just getting started. Wow. I'm so impressed. Is the mom project a for-profit company or is it a nonprofit? So the mom project is for-profit. Momproject.org is our not-for-profit arm in which we can really truly make a difference um, socially. What's the, what's the number one thing you find people need help with? Is it the resume? Is it LinkedIn? Is it the, the encouragement? I'm going to say all of the above. And again, going back to your first question, mom's not self-advocating. We don't feel like we have the power. Mm -hmm. So a lot of my work is in the encouragement and motivation space, right? We need you to take that step and believe in yourself. First, believe in yourself that you can do it. Take that step. We're going to make everything else happen for you. We just need you to come and take advantage of what we have to offer. But so many women just are afraid to take that step. You know, and that's the self-advocate. That's the, you know, I've been in this spot for a long time. I've kind of gotten comfortable, but yet there's more out there. I know I want to do something. I know there's more in me and I need to make money for my family, but yet, uh, so I love that you're offering that encouragement. Anybody out there who's thinking, I don't know if I should get back into the workforce. I kind of want to just do it. Just do mm -hmm. it. Take the, don't think twice where it's being offered. <laughs> Where can people find more information um, if they if they want to get back and they need your help? Momproject.org is where you can come read about our program and apply for the scholarship opportunity, the certification program of your interest. Then you'll be contacted by one of our um, enrollment specialists to talk through your personal path curation a little bit more because we want to make sure that um, the path you create aligns with your background, but also aligns with your your career aspirations, right? Mm -hmm. So we offer personal path uh, curation um, to ensure that you're going to be successful in the, the path that you choose. I love it. I love it that you are such a good example of that from being a Spanish teacher to the tech world. And here you are now working for the mom project with three kids as a single mom, like yes. just a, a great example of all of that. Thank you. Okay. I've got two questions I like to ask mm -hmm. of people just like you, so we can learn from you. Um, my first question I ask this of all of my guests is what is your favorite productivity tool? It doesn't have to be like technology or anything, but something that just helps you get things done and stay on track. Old fashioned notebook and pen paper. I carry a notebook everywhere I go. And I have one notebook that I have been journaling in since 2014. And I still refer to that notebook every day because there are gems in there. There are words of affirmation in there. Um, there are things that I wrote a long time ago that have actually come true. So for me, old fashioned to-do list written down on paper with a pen. <laughs> There's something about the old fashioned nature of it. I, I, yes. I try to do it on my phone in notes and I just can't stay with it. So I do the same I thing. I carry a notebook right. with me. And just any notebook too. I put the date and just whatever thoughts I've got or notes. Love it. Okay. And then my second question, and you've been through several, like we said, several different jobs um, and very different. Uh, what is your purpose and when did you discover it? 
So I have kind of like a tagline for myself, right? And so I feel like my purpose, everything that I stand on is about redefining standards and inspiring others. I'm a non-traditional mom. I'm a single mom of three. I started off as a Spanish teacher and then I did a whole bunch of other things, right? <laughs> so I'm non-traditional. I redefine standards, but I'm also inspiring others while I do it. Um, when did I... Um, figure all this out. Again, I've just kind of been journaling things to, since 2014, but I really had to go through a lot of life experiences to be able to live in my purpose. Like I always knew I had one, but you just have to go through things in order to live and to truly make a difference in other people's lives. So I made it through, so now I can help others make it through. And I'm, I'm guessing that the hardships you've been through helped you figure that out. You know what? Yes, hardships, but I never look at them as hardships. I look at them as opportunities. Mm -hmm. Yes, I may be going through something right now, but I can always see the light at the end of the tunnel. And I know that whatever I'm going through today is only going to propel me to the next level. So that's how I tackle all of the challenges that come my way. I know they won't last forever. I just need to get through them. Yeah, so true. Shandra, thanks so much for being a guest today on the podcast. I, I really appreciate it. I encourage people to follow the mom project on Instagram. That's where I found you all and reached out because I love what you're doing and um, best of luck with it. Again, Thank anybody you. who's, who's listening and is just thinking about getting back into the workforce or looking for um, some inspiration, I encourage them to find you all the mom project and uh, just continue doing what you're doing. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Well, take care.